these teams coming into this match actually with six points in total so far uh, through uh, through the Carnage and our Pro League. However, Sync Esports has only played three matches, whereas uh, Rexars has played four matches. So I'm looking at the results right now. Rexars has had an interesting trip so far. Through four matches, they've won a series two nothing. They've won a series two games to one. They've lost a series one game to two. And they've lost the series zero games to two. So they, they've had a flavor of all. They, all the outcomes here as far as these best of the threes are concerned. As far as Sync Esports, of course, they were, they've gone 2-0 in, in, in two of their matches. And then they went 0-2 against BMG uh, in, in that match up there. You know, hence why they're only at the six points currently. But, again, Sync Esports, no doubt the... Yeah, I mean, you can say the favorites in this matchup here. But with that said, it's going to be interesting to obviously see... How Rexars matches up, because this Rexars team, man, I mean, they've shown they can not only compete, but could definitely beat some solid teams. In fact, they're uh, going through here. Their 2 nothing victory was actually, uh, who was that against? That was against the last of us. No solid team there, of course, taking them out 2, two nothing, And then they also went 2-1 uh, against Team Excellent, actually. And that's definitely a very impressive result uh, for Rexars right there. So, of course, that was in the first week. So... Uh, definitely, again, a team that can compete and definitely can beat some of those top teams. But, again, no doubt Sync has to be that favorite going into this one. Now, with that said, uh, going into the bands and picks here, let's take a closer look and see what the hell is actually going on. Drunken Master, Puppet Master, Ophelia, and Kronos going to be coming out here. Rhapsody, the first pick, Devour, followed up by Sync Esports. And then you got Bubbles into Parasite. So far, that's how things are shaping up. So, Sync Esports, still the fan of that jungle situation. Uh, again, it seems like we've been fa not phasing out jungle necessarily by any means, but the idea of not running junglers is becoming a lot more prevalent on the competitive Han scene. So, uh, that's not to say, though, and again, in this case, slapped a very, very good jungler, specifically with here like Parasite. Not surprising to still see Sync Esports kind of go that route here and uh, gonna going to try to make it work, at least for this match. So, we'll see. How that plays out for them, but the Devourer first pick, definitely the interesting one. But at the same time, you know, again, you're dealing with Mickey over here. Mickey recently coming off a uh, big success, specific in that one versus one show match, of course, that we had last week. What a what a what a fun uh, fun show match series that was. Uh, of course, Sink Esports winning that, and it's safe to say a big thanks to Mickey, especially in the end. He had quite the run there against BMG and the Legends. Uh, Team Legends to eventually uh, secure it for Sync Esports. But uh, my point being, his Devourer play is quickly becoming super KGE level and in some cases exceeding, you could say. I mean, I think you could safely say that. This guy is an impressive, impressive, not only just player in general, but definitely a Devourer player as well. So really putting a lot of value right there in that Devourer pick. But again, it's worked out in the past and for good reason. Now, Moon Queen going to be the final regular or first three picks here. For Rexar is followed up by Torture, of course, coming up for Sync Esports. So, uh, as far as uh, this start again is looking here, obviously Rexar is they're going to be getting that hard carry out of the way. Now, Sync Esports they already have a very aggressive lineup in the makings. Devour and Parasite, especially, you got your very solid support here on Torture. Great for the babysitting and just all around greatness. Uh, so, definitely going to be looking to take it to Rexar. I'm sure. Now, it's going to be interesting to see what Rexar does here. As far as are uh, they going to maybe try to go with some kind of an aggressive trialing with the Moon Queen? I mean. I mean, this Rexar's team especially, and they, they're known for trying some different things, as a lot of teams have been, especially with the 3.3 or 3.4 patch, I should say. Um, and again, Insania, a.k.a. Azure Rexar at the top there, the captain of Rexar. He, of course, joined them going into this Carnage of Caldivar event. Again, Rexar's was a team, just to be very clear on that once again. They were a team before Insania joined, and they actually competed in, in uh, bronze, silver, and gold in Haunt Tour Season 2. And I believe even Diamond a couple of uh, cycles. And in fact, they were in the playoffs as well. And they even advanced on in the playoffs, getting out of the group status. So, again, this was a team that already was actually doing pretty solid things before Insania joined. But no doubt, Insania, again, a huge addition. Gives them a lot of that experience that they were really looking for, I'm sure. And obviously a very good captain role. Uh, in the yeah, an excellent drafter, so definitely a great, great pickup for them. And again, I think it's safe to say it has shown throughout uh, this event so far. So, uh, okay, it looks like Snowy was able to get things working. So as soon as uh, he gives me the go-ahead, uh, okay, just let me know when you are in. All right, so as soon as he's good to go, then I'll give him a call here and see how things are going. But anyways, with that said, the band's kind of picking up here. Pharaoh, Empath, Doctor Repulsor, Magnus, and Soul Stealer. Uh, so far, coming out the final band 
going to be happening by uh, from Sync Esports over here. But you look at all those Rec Stars bands, Doctor and Soul Stealer even especially. And we have been seeing a lot of Soul Stealer more so recently. As, as a go-to pickup hero, Flensmeister definitely can play that very, very well. Dr. Postler, of course, one of those just quote-unquote cheese kind of heroes. Uh, and then uh, and Feral thrown in there as well for that suicide potential. Hell in the series yesterday, BMG versus uh, uh, Reason Gaming, which definitely was a very solid series there. Uh, Reason, uh, they banned in the initial bans against BMG. They took out the Feral. Uh, you know, definitely putting a lot of value there. I don't know, it's actually BMG may have been. Anyways, Feral's getting a lot of attention himself too, even at that status. Now, these are interesting picks. Cersei coming out for Rexars. Again, going back to Azure Rexar, aka Insania. We have seen him play before. It's, it's fun to watch. And again, that also gives you not only, uh, it gives you a lot of late game potential in that support class. Now, as far as the laning phase, obviously not considered to be the strongest, but a mix of late game. She's very, very strong, as well as also just one of those simply annoying heroes and a great scouting tool as well. And I think that there could be some logic there as to why they chose the Cersei pick and picked it so quickly after the bans. Uh, you know, you got heroes like Parasite, like a Tundra now even, a Devour, very somewhat of a roam heavy team here on Sync. Spotting out those ganks with the constant illusion spawning of Cersei is very, very possible here. Uh, going to be coming out from Rex Heads, and perhaps the, the logic even uh, in the end of going with that pickup. Keeper of the Forest is going to be their final pick in the end. So now the question lies, is that going to be a Jungle Keeper or a Suicide? I think it's going to be a Jungle Keeper. Uh, well, no, I was going to say because I believe Grimnex is a jungler, but no, he is actually looks like their Suicide player for the most part. I think he has a mix there, actually. He has some Jungle play as well, so not 100% sure what we are ultimately going to expect here, but uh, that is going to be interesting to see how they choose to land this, because if you do do a Suicide Keeper, that's going to be a Tri-Lane Moon Queen more than likely coming out. Yeah, it has to be a Suicide Keeper, the more I'm looking at it now, because <laughs> if he was in a jungle, I mean, what, you would either have to have a Solar Rhapsody or a Cersei at that point, and that uh, that doesn't seem like it makes a lot of sense. So, very likely going to be a Suicide Keeper of the Forest and setting up for a Tri-Lane of that Moon Queen. Uh, now, again, that's kind of interesting. Cersei, not the strongest landing presence when it comes to being a support hero, especially in a Tri-Lane makeup. However, if she has those setup studs, her Q could actually be pretty solid for at least assisting with the kills. The entrapment ability, of course, could definitely be solid for that. And has the, uh, what is that E called? The uh, Deceive to be able to escape if she happens to be gone on. So it's going to be very intriguing to see how this works out for Rexars here. Wretched Hag going to be the final pick for Sync Esports as far as their side is concerned. So, all right, it looks like we are ready up and good to go. I'm going to go ahead and give Znui a call. Looks like he should be uh, in the game as well. Znui! Hey, man. Hey, how's it going? Well, I got my microphone working now, so I hope it's good. <laughs> it sounds great. It sounds great. So, yeah, just a little bit of technical issues there, it sounded like, but hey, it sounds like it's good now, so that's uh, that, that's good. I'm gl glad to have you here as a co-caster, man. Yeah, thank uh, you. We got Rexars versus Sync Esports. So again, we just kind of went through the whole draft right there. Obviously, uh, you just you are just joining. Are you in the game yet, or you're good? Yeah, I, okay. I just got in, so I'm taking a quick look at the drafts here. Yeah, it was uh, you know nothing too out of the ordinary initially, but then the Cersei pick coming out from Rexars after the second set of bands, followed by Tundra, and then it, they went the Keeper last, and very likely going to be a Suicide Keeper of the Forest even uh, coming out on this on this Rexar side. So we have not seen a Suicide Keeper in a long, long time. Um, hmm. Curious to see how that works out. It could it could be the keeper suicide, but I think they might be the Cersei suicide as well. I mean, he has oh, been run yeah. sometimes as the suicide option. Really? But, okay. Yeah, but I, I don't think it's like a very good choice. But um, he doesn't necessarily do too much in the roaming part. As soon as he hits six, uh, it doesn't yeah. well, he's not too useful for his team <laughs> in that role. So. Uh, but uh, yeah, like you said, I mean, it might be like some kind of try lane down here, and then it is to keep out of forest suicide. But mm, yeah, interesting indeed. Yeah, the Hel Hellborn lineup kind of screams badass all over the place for me. <laughs> well, there's a couple things that definitely know. One is obviously it's in a very aggressive makeup over here by Sync. But the other thing, they have that parasite tundra combination. And back when they were. <laughs> That's the new announcer for the uh, Pirates vs. Ninjas. That's hilarious. Um, the uh, the Parasite Tundra combination, back when they were known as Denial, of course, and whatnot, 
This was a combo that they really were strong with, and we saw bands of Tundra and even Parasite for this reason, obviously, against them. So they're kind of going back to their roots, you can almost say, with the yeah. uh, Tundra Parasite. So yeah, that's that that's going to be scary for Rexstars to deal with, I'm sure. That's that's like the most annoying combo in the entire game, yeah. more or less, if you know how to execute it. And I know that Sinky Sport, like you mentioned, does. Um, torture, kind of running into two supports here. He needs to be a little bit careful so he doesn't get trapped. I think he might fall here. Oh, there's the entrapment. Staccato's to follow Moonbeam. We need to be coming out. And yep, support is going to end up falling. Red Rex are playing the Cersei, actually. Gets credit. Now, I was talking about that. I mean, not considered a strong laner as Cersei, but the entrapment can help set up kills. Hey, she landed that without a set up stun. That's, that's not easy to do uh, in the end. So that, that definitely secures the kill. For yeah. uh, Rexers right there, so well played. He did wait until the torture was in that little narrow area, more or less. So not much places to sidestep, and yeah, yeah got the kill. But um, I think support was playing a little bit too aggressive. I mean, I think it was expected to be this offensive, or I mean, this defensive trial. I mean, there's not much else they can do. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, a little bit of a misplay by him, but well, well played by Rexers, I guess. Uh, Devourer also going for the DK level 1. I mean, if he had a hook, he could have saved the Torture, but, uh, well, can't really blame Mickey for that. Yeah. Now, what do you think of that decision, by the way? Obviously, they've sent uh, the Torture Devourer down here. Once again, they're going to be going on. Devour actually, the target choice. Not after you see that, but he's actually in a lot of trouble, and he's going to end up falling as well. Purple Rex are playing the Moon Queen, actually getting the kill. Now, Parasite comes in. Look at that. The Ebola he actually explodes with it, but really not doing a whole lot there. Uh, in the end, it's got there too. Like, can be a great tool for slowing and getting kills slash saving, but obviously not in time there. But yeah, and Devo's going to be porting back here. That's. Uh, do you think this is the correct decision? Since the lane is pushed, I guess they can stay here for now, or actually kiss are picking up a kill on bubbles in the mid lane. That's yeah. big. Um, but yeah, like I said, uh, like the lane is pushed right now, so I think it's all right for him to port down now. But I think they're going to have to switch it up sooner or later. Um. Oh, nice hook attempt there. <laughs> that was close, yeah. If he hit Rhapsody, that was probably did Rhapsody. But again, oh, Torture's in a trouble once again. Gets a nice chain reaction. It's off. Rhapsody could not get a range for Staccatos, actually. So, uh, Torture is able to escape right there. Zincinia, for whatever reason, the communication maybe not 100% on the ball right there. Just was not close enough. So, good job by Torture. At least getting away and landing the chain reaction in the first place. Actually going to stack the Ancients off to the side. Uh, but yeah, so no doubt continuing to see a pretty aggressive play down here uh, between these two sides. So look out for more kills. But uh, the other lanes, before like, it keeps getting too crazy here, um, as you mentioned, and as we saw, Bubbles getting killed in the middle lane. That's that's not something you would expect to happen, is it? No, I, I would um, favor the Tundra in the matchup, but there's no way he should ever, ever get a kill. Yeah. Well, he did. Oh. <laughs> yeah, he did. <laughs> and actually, he's going to be going once again. Not no kill, but you just see the damage he's able to put out. And uh, L Lilo Rexar here playing the bubbles is having trouble staying in the yeah. lane, it seems like. Kind of makes me think that he um, might have underestimated Tundra's damage before that. Oh, top lane. Keep it the force. Ward of Rev goes down, so Green Rexar actually might be in trouble right here. He's going to try to kite around. He now, I don't think he realizes he's trying to sit next to the trees. But at that point, you got to figure there's something up, so... Yeah. <laughs> in the end, he goes down. Well, good roaming coming out from Slapped, of course, bringing that road of revelation, securing the kill, but yeah, I really think that Green Rex should have tried to run the opposite direction. Mm -hmm. Because, like, he had no dust debuff on him, so it should be quite easy to figure that there is a red ward placed down. And uh, talking about red wards and stuff, Tundra is in this here in the mid lane, but uh, not going to find bubbles. Yeah. So instead, just will continue to farm, uh, and obviously Keizu's impact so far, 390 gold per minute now. No doubt this is a hero with some good snowball potential. He gets that earlier on portal key especially, gets that initiation with the avalanche. It can set up kills not only by himself, but easily with a teammate, of course, uh, if it calls for it. So the potential is there already for the Hellborn side, but at the same time, Moon Queen is getting some pretty good farm for, uh, for the Legion team, 335 gold per minute. Uh, in the end, and you know, again, they haven't got a kill for a, for a little bit now. So, at least Devour and Torture have been doing better in that sense. 
Uh, yeah, they are playing a bit more passive now, uh, as they should have done from level one. But uh, yeah, the Legion team is definitely built around this Moon Queen. Everything is going to depend on Moon Queen's farm. And okay, just as I say that, uh, once again they play aggressive and go up like that. <laughs> and I was watching the middle lane actually, but yeah, Slapped coming in for the gank and securing the kill on the bubbles yet again. But yeah, so the bottom lane, as you're saying that torture, it goes a little too much up, and all of a sudden. He gets taken out. So, again, kind of a plus or minus there for either side uh, in the end. Again, the Moon Queen's still going up, but so is Tundra. But actually, they're going to go for another go. Mickey again going up a little too far. You think they would have learned their lesson by now, man? Yeah, I don't know what they're doing. I mean, it's obvious that they can't stay down there. I mean, Moon Queen is just going to throw out a Moonbeam from a long range, and then the Entrapment from Cersei is going to follow up on that. I mean, there's no way they're going to survive it. So, I don't know why they're not switching it up, or at least, like, getting a lane ward or something, I mean, a ward in there in the forest. Yeah. To prevent this kind of stuff. Um, someone's whispering me about some overlay. The overlay, we... I just, yeah, I, I failed. I failed this time around. I just switched it, so. It's not, you can still see action and stuff, but I have the, the sides are covered up, so. <laughs> <laughs> I just switched it, though, so I apologize, guys. I was delayed on this one, but it should be good now. So, unfortunately, a six-minute delay, though, so. Chat will yeah, that's something that happens to everyone. Oh yeah, it's happened to me plenty of times. <laughs> plenty of cast, but plenty of times. Anyways, uh, so yeah, Moon Queen now level 6, and again, and even another kill added to that. So she's 1-0-3 right here, and looking at 350 gold per minute uh, at this point. So, But outside of that, again, you have this Tundra. Do you expect to see it? I mean, look at that, going to Striders early on. Is this going to be straight to a portal, do you think? Could be, could be. Uh, since you got 1.1k already saved up, I've... Yeah, that would make more most sense to me at least, but um, I guess the Striders works out, but I'm not necessarily a fan of it, not necessarily when he's sitting on 400 plus GPM. I think he can go a little bit more of a carry route with the Steam Boots. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, uh, no lane ward down here for Moon Queen now, so they need to be careful for that so Tundra or Hag doesn't TP down, because if they do, it's a free kill on Moon Queen. Yeah. You see that, that Shiver, has, as you would expect, really being used to kind of scout things out, see what's going on, but look at that. The uh, supports saw it and were eventually able to get it killed uh, using the Disco Inferno right there to actually take out the Shiver in the end and make sure that uh, Tundra's not getting that free vision near the bottom lane. So Keeper of the Force, he is level 6 at this point, so we'll see if Green Rexar maybe looks for an opportunity. Uh, just finishing off some Ancients right there, but instead going to go up to the top lane. Obviously, Wretched Axe starting to push it in a little bit. Seeing that nobody's there for the time being, but uh, going to set up somewhat of a defense here on his side. But yeah, you, you, you can see with the way that this uh, Hellborn team is starting to advance now. I mean, they're, they're going to start this movement sooner than later at this point, and uh, that's going to be the issue for Rexars and whether or not they can fight against that. So, uh, Parasite, I mean, he has another 1,100 gold saved up. wonder what he's going to go for. We've been seeing a lot of, uh, a lot of puzzle box seems to be a more of a go-to option on Parasites recently. You think that's going to be the case here? Hmm. Um, I could see it. Um, the Cersei has a lot of invis, or a little bit of invis at least, so it could be good against her, as well as the wards are going to be very important as well when you're running that ganking setup that we were talking about. Oh, and Kelpfield coming out here in the mid lane <laughs> on an illusion. Yeah. They were a little antsy. <laughs> And I, I mean, I guess they couldn't see the other illusion behind either, you know, because the time so that makes a little more sense. But yeah, that's just unfortunate. That, but at the same time, that's a good play by Keizu. I mean, yeah, that was well the purpose, of course. But still, think that you should always like throw out an auto attack at least or something like that. I mean, he was yeah. pretty close up to the bubbles or to the edge. I mean, an experienced player are never going to be standing downhill. Not that obvious, at least. Uh, but yeah, the puzzle box. I think he. I think he's gonna go for it. Um, kind of changed my mind a little bit because the Moon Queen ultimate is kind of, or it's kind of effective against the Moon Queen ultimate as well. Yeah. In the team fights. Very true. So we'll see again what that uh, what that route is. Obviously, the Ghost Marchers here for Slapped currently 1960 gold saved up on Tundra. So again, leaning more and more towards that uh, straight into a portal key here. For uh, for Kesu, and then that's where the activity could really start to pick up. Uh, and hell, even in the meantime, wretched hack. Flensmeister's farm has obviously been very very good. 377 gold per minute here. He's very close to picking up a light brand, most likely, 
uh, at this point in time. So Keeper of the Force, again, level 7. Would you like to see more movement from him at this point, or just Yeah, at the top I would lane? like him to go through the forest and farm or something. Uh, just swap up the lanes with Bubbles, maybe. Send Bubbles up there to suicide. He doesn't necessarily need that much, much farm. Um, not at this level, or at this stage of the game, at least. Mm -hmm. uh, because right now, I mean, Keeper of Force is doing nothing. Okay, he is gonna uh, rotate to the actions. That's something that's good, but he should have done it a lot earlier. Yeah. Well, he is going to be doing it now, so well, again, doing the Ancients. I mean, he, he did do the Ancients once before, I believe, so, you know, being somewhat active in that sense. But, again, this this is a vulnerable tower now. Once again, Wretched Ag just going to put a little bit of pressure on it and not kill it just yet, but going to, again, get some, continue to get that good farm as the Light Brand, I believe, has been purchased. Yeah, it's already on the way uh, at this point. There's the Portal Key on Tundra. Guess what? They're at the bottom lane. And Cersei might be in trouble. Now, I think they want to make sure that it is the real Cersei first. And Okay, but she's going to fall back before any jump happens. Yeah, Tundra definitely could have got a, could have got a kill there. But like I said, it was Cersei. You never can be 100% sure <laughs> if it's real or not. So uh, definitely not going for the jump. But this is that combo that we're talking about. Now, look at this. Parasite takes over the Shiver, flies in. Moon Queen is here. There is support oh, nearby. I don't think they can get him. They could try, but I think it's going to result in a back, or it's going to backfire to them. Yeah. Mickey's con going to come in here as well now, but he's running over a war of sight, so now it's more than obvious that they're all down here. Yeah. Yeah, they but, wanna... uh... <laughs> Oh, there's oh. the hug! Beautiful hug from Mickey on a Moonkun right there. Gets the easy kill. A little bit of overkill. <laughs> Bad Blast, I don't know if that was necessary, <laughs> but hey, it was a Moon Queen after all. They just really wanted to make sure. Yeah. That she was dead. It's more like, here we come, guys. Yeah. Um, yes, stating, or, yeah. Stating his point, more or less, but, uh, yeah, definitely not needed. Um, they are gonna counter push a little bit in the mid lane, but. What are they gonna, like, what are they gonna stop seeing esports with? I mean, if Moon Queen is the kind of hero that needs a little bit of a build up item, I mean, he needs a BKB before he can go into these team fights, and right now they have a Keeper and a Bubbles plus two supports with nearly no farm at all. Yeah. So I feel like they're, yeah, maybe a little bit too greedy, or maybe they invested a little bit too much into that Moon Queen. I mean, they invested two supports during the laning phase, and um, they, sure, they got a few kills on Devour and Torture, um, but it wasn't worth three heroes, like, to get Moon Queen to this 335 GPM mark. Yeah. Yeah, uh, I mean, yeah, it's, if he has the Whispering Helm, obviously, with that Soul Screaming, so again, his farm is not too, too bad, but like you're saying, it's just whether or not it's overall worth the investment, but I will say they do have, again, this is kind of just hit it, because I've yet to see this combo actually come into play, I've heard it talked about, but the Cersei Moon Queen combination, I mean, they do have that, and how you can just spawn illusions with Cersei, of the Moon Queen, and you can just push lanes yourself, especially in that mid to late game stage. It's pretty ridiculous, but um, obviously that itself also needs a lot of time before that's really going to be uh, very, very valuable. So as long as Sync Esports is able to keep up this pace of being aggressive, as, as, as their lineup is definitely spoken for, then uh, they, they're definitely in a very good spot. You saw right there, Parasite was scouting out Moon Queen once again at the Ancients, but uh, not able to find the jump opportunity, so instead... We'll go back for more farm now. He has a Neophytes book, so it's, I mean, that still could be a puzzle box, but I don't know. It's now even leaning more towards the way of maybe it is just going to be that Codex at that yeah. point. Yeah, two supports, and Rhapsody went for the Ghost Marchers, which I'm never a fan of. I kind of hate that on supports. Mm -hmm. uh, just going to make it easier for Slap to, like, get solo kills while in that bird. Well, so, yeah, it gets that, and, and obviously will have that uh, as long as he splits up his boots. Very, very shortly right here. Uh, Keizu, he hasn't really been able to use that portal key just yet. Again, the bottom lane, that was more of just because of a make a big hook than anything. But at the same time, again, he's had that portal key now. And just going to continue to farm for for the meantime. They're not in a huge, huge rush, obviously, at this state. Because, again, especially with them having a wretched hag who's also doing very well with her farm. So is, is there a mark, you think, for this Hellborn team that Sink Esports should really look to turn it on? Because right now they're playing the farm game. Yeah, I think they should keep going uh, with the farm game for, well, another 15 minutes or something at least, if they want to be like optimal. Uh, I don't think they need to, I mean, they could easily man up as five people right now and just take a team fight. but there's nothing wrong, I mean, in playing it safe. Yeah. Um, like you said, I mean, the Cersei Moon Queen, that is ridiculously strong. Uh, 
almost impossible to beat in the late game, but are they gonna get to that point? Like, it takes a lot of time to reach that. And Moon Queen, I mean, he's not doing well. He, I mean, he's 350, but I feel like he should be close to the 500 GPM mark, yeah. more or less. Uh, I didn't pay too much attention to it. I don't know if you saw it, but did Tundra use that uh, bird to maybe block some camps or something? I, I don't know 100%. I mean, it wouldn't surprise me, but yeah, I'm honestly not 100% sure if that was the case or not. I know that he was kind of scouting out with it a, a couple times, but... You know, definitely might have been blocking the camps as well. But I mean, speaking of that, again, using the shiver, kind of seeing what's going on over here, but no kills, or maybe actually Tundra is running, and he actually cleans up the rest of the neutrals, and then Portal Keys away before anything happens to him. So, yeah, being a little sneaky right there and getting what he can. Uh, by the way, Aznu, your mic is sometimes getting a little, like, very scratchy, and, and I don't know what the mm -hmm. issue is, but if, the, if that's the issue that you're having earlier, but... Um, just, yeah. yeah, if there's anything to do. It, it's, not, it's really not that big of a deal. It only happens every now and then. But anyways, holy crap, big fun at the bottom lane. Moon Finale doing a lot of work right there. Big turnaround with the Kel Field and three players all of a sudden dead on the Hellborn side for the one of Cersei. Now, if this, if Rexars are going to start to, you know, calm things down and obviously climb back in, that was a fight right there to do it. So, that was a huge turnaround at that bottom lane. It was. A uh, nice uh, response by uh, Rexors, definitely taking a big step back into this game. And uh, yeah, going to keep pushing the bot tower. They're going to go for it here. And you see Keeper of the Forest, obviously, he hasn't ulted yet this whole game. Has Keeper of the Forest, he's, uh, he's taking advantage of that route, so that's something to keep in mind. But uh, in the end, this is going to be a bottom tower push. I mean, Torture, he's nearby, but Torture needs to be careful not to get too close. Oh, kind of, maybe. Root was thinking about it, but... No, he decides it's not worth it. Hook attempt maybe from Devour and not going to get the angle. So, uh, keeping the force falls back in time. So, But again, yeah, very good push right there from X-Stars. And uh, now you got a Moon Queen that is over 400 gold per minute at least. So not that 500 GPM mark by any means. But, hey, he's working towards a shrunken head now. That's what you were talking about earlier, how that could obviously be a, a big turning item. In yeah, a lot of gold invested for that bot tower to, or to try to defend the bot tower. But... In the end, they didn't even get the deny, so uh, big misstep there by Sync Esports in general. Mm -hmm. That team decision, I'm not sure about that one. Whoever called out to TP down there with five people. Um, <laughs> well, they are running, or Torture is going to be spotted out there by the Word of Revelation. Not sure if they are going to try to do something about it, but there is a Trisect Dungeons here. Okay, yeah, you see right there, it takes out the illusion, but... Gonna go for those triple stack agents. I think they're gonna get it because, yeah, the Legion team, if anything, they're just not too interested in trying to defend that for the time being. Uh, a little too risky, they feel, it looks like. So, gonna maybe send in an illusion right here to check it out, but by the time they do, that will be stolen. So, good uh, good job controlling the resources here on Sync Esports side, definitely. Uh, I also want to make mention of Flensmeister here. Kind of interesting, you know, he went straight Grimoire, man. Obviously got Steam Boots with the Ring of the Teacher early on, but, you know, some, you usually see more of, like, the Grave Locket at least, a little bit of build-up, but no, he just went straight uh, straight Grimoire. No Mystic Vestments or anything <laughs> at this yeah, point. Yeah, there's just so. nothing that the Legion team can do, I, I mean, to kill him. They have nothing to set up with. Yeah. The bubble is kelp field. That's it. Oh, Devour gets picked off. That was a good pickoff right there for the Legion team. He got kind of the bad spot, as you mentioned, the Kelfield. Sure enough, being used right there by Bubbles uh, to, to pick him off. So, obviously right there. And now we got Rexars, all five of them. They're going to be grouped up in. Again, this is uh, now Cersei spawning those Moon Queen Illusions. I mean, she's going to start doing it, like some good damage that we we're talking about. Um, uh, with, with, even with the illusions, and you gotta get a couple of them start pushing in the lanes and whatnot. But again, also this tool of just simply scouting for That's what I was talking about at the beginning, how that's just another power of Cersei, no doubt, is you have the ability to just constantly make those movable wards almost uh, and, and scout to see how things are going. Now, also, Parasite's kind of interesting here because, I mean, okay, he might be going, still, still might be going Codex actually, just gonna keep the Ghost Marchers as they are. Uh, for the time being, and then just gets the 2,000 gold for the yeah. eventual codex. But I guess that I'm a, about the Grimoire of Power that was picked up here by the Hag, and no kind of build-up items like the Grave Locket. If they do go for that kind of build, which I agree on, because I definitely think they could take this into the late game. But if they do, I mean, they can't have Devourer running like uphill on to the Legion side, for example. Then the entire team have to play passive until he gets his secondary item. Yeah. So right now, they're not necessarily playing it that great together as a team. 
in my opinion. I feel like uh, Rexers are getting a chance here of coming back because of it, because they are a little bit unsure, I mean, what to do. Rexerhag went for the Grimoire, but Tundra, he went for the early Striders into the Polki. Like, it's two completely different kind of builds. One is offensive and one is defensive, so... Yeah. Yeah, it's going to be interesting to see how that obviously plays out for them. I mean, again, the Shiver scouting out the tower is going to fall right here. Not much of a defense put up by Rexos. Of course, again, they are very close to the timing of that shrunken head on uh, on Moon Queen. So, of course, that's, if anything, what they are what they are going to be looking to go for right here. Uh, again, uh, again, guys, I know, just uh, just bear with it, at least for this game. Uh, uh, again, this new is Mike, uh, your mic. It's just, yeah. it's only every now, I mean, there are points that's clear, but. I could try to sw or, uh, swap microphones to the older one, because, like I mentioned, I mean, I had some problems before okay. getting into this game with this one. Yeah. Um, uh, do you I maybe want to try that then? To yeah, sure, see. I can do it. Okay. I'm just going to uh, jump out of the Skype call real quick. Sure. I'll we'll be right back. Yeah, just let me know when you're going to go. Just go and call back. All right, so yeah, I'll hopefully get that uh, figured out there, guys. Yeah, again, it was it was getting to the point. Obviously, it's it's even hard to hear him sometimes. <laughs> trying to go on, so hopefully, we can get that figured out and back in. But anyway, 21 minutes in right here now. Again, Zinke Esports has the lead, 3,500 goal lead, 2,500 experience lead. But uh, as as usual with the Moon Queen game, you have a Moon Queen with that's uh, getting some good farm here, 430 gold per minute. Bubbles has also stepped up his game. I mean, this is a Bubbles that was struggling early on and getting killed by uh, by Keizu uh, very early. In fact, it happened twice eventually as Parasite also came in for a second kill. And he was, he was getting locked down quite a bit, but he's recovered by all means. And obviously, again, that bottom lane, what happened down there as far as uh, as far as turning things around, getting the three-for-one exchange, that was that could have been the mistake that, that Rexars was looking to capitalize on this early game stage to really keep them in it. I, I say that could have been. I think that definitely was uh, what they what they needed. So uh, he got a shrunken head now on Moon Queen again, still playing the farm game. The more you do wait, though, at the same time, Flensmeister, 524 gold per minute. Jeez. Another 3,300 gold already saved up. So going to have a shrunken head herself. And I would think if you're if, if you're Sync Esports, that's probably going to be the big mark as well for you. Uh, get that shrunken head on uh, on Wretched Hag and then kind of go from there. All right, it looks like Snooey, you're back. Yeah, I don't know. It depends okay. on if this microphone is working or not. I mean, it, it's up to you. It works. It sounds fine to me. All right, then I'm good to go. <laughs> good, good. Awesome, awesome. Okay, so yeah, I was just talking about how, again, Shrunken Head just finished on Moon Queen, but now you got 3,700 plus gold on Wretched Hag. It looks like she's going to straight up buy a Shrunken Head here herself uh, very shortly. You think uh, once once you see that, she's level 16 now, is this where Sink Esports is like, okay, let's turn it on here, let's push some lanes in and get some kills? Or, oh, yeah, actually, I mean, oh. as they say that, Wretched Hag might be in some trouble right here. Keeper the Force comes in with the rune. She doesn't have enough for the Shrunken Head yet. She's going to go for the TP. Not going to happen, though. Down goes Wretched Hag. Cast just curse, baby. It's real. <laughs> it is. Um, yeah, I think they have to do something now. I mean, there's no way that they can sit back anymore. I mean, at the start of the game, I think they would have been able to take it to the late game. But after they picked up the Striders uh, on the Tundra, into the Polki, with the Codex, I think it was, and slapped, right? Or what did he go for? In uh, the... Puzzle Box, actually. He did go Puzzle oh, Box. Oh, okay. So he went for the Puzzle Box. Interesting. Okay. Um, a little bit of good news there, at least for him, <laughs> uh, getting into the late game. But yeah, like, Devour not necessarily having the best game either. So I think they have to do something. Ratchet Hag is not going to outcarry the Moon Queen. Mm -hmm. I think he's going to be able to counter push very well when he gets that BKB timing because there's nothing, literally nothing, that Legion can lock him down with unless they get a uh, cheap or something like that. Yeah. And that's not going to happen in a long time. Yeah, the, I mean, the other thing is, too, again, we talk about Cersei and the Spawning the Illusion and everything, but obviously there's the, well, her, her Twisted Visage, as it's called, her ultimate, of course, and if she's able to get the positioning to catch this Wretched Hag. Then uh, <laughs> that's you're not only dealing with the farm moon queen, but then also your own farmed wretched hag going against you. Of course, obviously that's the <laughs> idea of the hero. So uh, now it's not 100% guaranteed by any means, but yeah, definitely the late game. I think you could definitely favor in for Rexar. So um, is, is the ultimate point right there. So Seek Esports, they're trying, but no, Rhapsody gonna be able to get away. Rhapsody portal key, by the way. Holy wow. crap! Ghost Marchers portal key Rhapsody. 
What is what is Insania doing? <laughs> I don't know. I, I guess I can agree, or I mean, see the um, reasoning behind the portal key. I mean, it's always good to get into position and try to save that Moon Queen. It kind of works a little bit like the Storm Spirit, I guess. Yeah. But the Ghost Marchers does not necessarily synergize very, very well with that portal key. <laughs> I mean, he's going to jump into the team, but then he's going to die from AoE damage alone. Mm -hmm. that, but, is a, uh, uh, <laughs> that is a little different there. As far as seeing that, but hey, you know, it gets in, like I said, kind of that positioning. Kind of like that, we talk about that, with, like, we never really see like a Jeraziah. Hey, he's one of those very every now and then as Conger goes down, by the way. That's big for uh, Sinkies. But sorry about that. I was making some adjustments there, so I wasn't paying full <laughs> attention. But yeah, Conger going down. Uh, but yeah, again, you sit in the background, then you'll be able to portal key in and then kind of save the day in his case with the Soul's Blessing. But obviously, in this case, with the Rhapsody, with the Protective Charm. But yeah, it's, at the same time, it's not guaranteed that it's going to be. 100% effective either, so um, we'll see if that investment pays off here for uh, for Rhapsody, because yeah, especially value what, where that gold was spent definitely could have you know got some like a tablet instead. You could argue would that have been better for the team, but yeah, at least uh, Ra it's not. Rhapsody running here around in the enemy force a little bit. I mean, he's kind of forced to place these odd wards now because Tundra is making a goddamn good job on uh, keeping all the vision down for the Legion team here with his Bandai. Yeah. Obviously a huge strength of, uh, of Tundra once again and what he brings to the table. So, and he has another 2,000 gold just about saved up. But what do we got up here? That's an illusion, I believe. Yeah, that's an illusion, Moon Queen. But Wretched Hag, there are enemies nearby. She needs to be careful. She blinks away. Bubbles, he hesitated. I think a quick kill right there could have got the job done. They might not even need it though. They're going to catch Wretched Hag. He has a shrunken and the token of life. He's going to fall right here. Toka's going to come back up. Did not use the shrunken, of course. Team is coming. And I think the Legion team wants to retreat right here, but they're going to be forced to fight. Out comes the root. Shrunken head by Wretched Hag, but also from Moonkin right there. The Moon Finale going off a lot of bounces, but the Paranel. But there's a protective mount. It helps save the day, at least initially. Not enough in the end. The burst was just too much. The protective melody got stopped. Moon Queen is dead. And now Rhapsody's trying to survive as well as the rest of her team. Bubble's also going to be picked off in the process. And a great response from Sync Esports right there as a team. Oh, look at that. Oh, he's going to get him. Yep. <laughs> Shiver going to help him out with that. <laughs> the KGE hook, apparently. Coming out from Mickey right there. But, yeah, so obviously good patience from Flensmeister at the same time. You know, could have panicked, could have gone for the Shrunken, but knew that he had the token. Resurrect, and the team came in and... Obviously, I, but at the same time, you gotta wonder if Rexar has made the right decision there to kind of flee or attempt to flee, or should they have just stood their ground and fought? Obviously, the hindsight maybe, but hmm. um, I, I, I kind of missed the, the start of the fight, so I can't really uh, tell my opinion. Yeah. Uh, but uh, regarding the PKB, it's like almost every single time it's best just if you have a token. Don't use the BKB on your first life. There's so many players who keeps doing that mistake, like because that's the kind of moment. Like if your enemy team is focusing you with a token, that means they're gonna use every single spell on you, and you're not gonna be able to survive even if you get the BKB off at most times at least. So it's better to just die and then get back. Like then your team is gonna be ready. They're gonna be in your positions, and as soon as you spawn, like you're gonna be able to give it your all. Mm -hmm. So and that's exactly what Singapore Sports really did right there. Again, Flensmaster playing the hag, being patient and to the point of able to get a great response out of the fight. So, uh, after that fight right there, again, Rexar, they still have the Moon Queen uh, very farmed, 427 gold per minute. But it, it does drop off after her quite a bit. We're on the other side. Again, Rexar even further ahead, and then the supporting cast uh, definitely up there. In fact, Tundra, 2800 gold uh, saved up. And I will say, too, the barrier auto really showed off that last fight. Uh, the Moon Finale got mitigated by quite a bit. Uh, from that barrier auto pickup from Mickey. Again, his impact hasn't honestly been the, been the biggest this game, especially as we're used to seeing, but hey, it's barrier auto alone, and he's, he's fitting the role of that tanky presence, really, uh, in those fights, so doing enough in that sense. Yeah, I got a barrier auto now. It's going to be helpful for his team for sure, but yeah, he had a hit misfortune uh, time during his laning phase, and well, Devar is not necessarily the best farmer or the best hero to catch up with, so yeah, struggling a little bit, but it's fine, I mean, Flensmeister is soaking up most of that farm anyway, so. It's the battle but of illusions here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there's a lot of them. Oh, actually, they're gonna port up to the top lane. Oh, where's what? What happened? Wait, what did happen? Bottom lane, the Keeper of the Force gets picked off by Parasite and Tundra down here. Yeah, Rhapsody couldn't get there in time, it looks like. So I thought they were maybe going top, but yeah, they went for the bottom lane. 
And there's all these ah, yeah. illusions <laughs> around too. It's hard to keep track sometimes. Yeah, I, I thought Munkum was gonna port up and defend the, the secondary tower against Hag or something because she was standing like in the middle of her jun own jungle, mm -hmm. like pretty much where she's standing right now, a little bit more to the north. And she ported to the bot tower, the secondary bot tower, so it was like not even worth it. I was a little bit confused by that, but. Uh, <laughs> Well, well, well. Um, yeah, it's just the heroes. I mean, in Legion's team. I mean, it, this is a little bit of a passive game. I mean, there's no hiding that, and there's just nothing that the Legion can do unless they are five people together, more or less, or it, unless they have their big ultimates up. I mean, they got the Keeper ultimate, the Bubbles ultimate, and the Moon Queen ultimate. But all those cooldowns are kind of long-term. Yeah cooldown, so to say. So without them, they can't do anything. So they're like going in and getting like one kill. If they use those ultimates for a pickoff, then yeah. they can't fight for another like, you know, two minutes or something. Yeah. It's not like they have a Pebbles that can jump in and burst someone down with 800 magic damage or something. No, they got these long-term cooldown ultimates that, yeah, kind of makes a little bit of a boring game, but well, well, if they want to win, I mean, no one can blame them. Yeah, that's what it takes. In fact, Moonbeam on a hag right here, but she's not too worried. In fact, she stands her ground and denies the tower as the Legion team basically falls back as a whole right there. So, uh, yeah, Wretched Hag really showing that he's not hes not too scared at that time. But, you know, a great point about just, again, this is a very strong team fight team on Rexars. But, yeah, they blow their cooldowns, depending on how the fight goes. If they only get one or two kills, maybe, then, you know, that's not really, that's not really a whole lot. And then they're going to need to reset some things, whereas... Uh, the Elborn team, obviously, they got a lot of just reset value and constantly going back in. What did Tundra buy, by the way? I know he had an Arcana. Oh, okay, actually goes Puzzle Box. So I think he might have, he definitely must have sold what? the Arcana and goes Puzzle Box in the end. Double Puzzle Box, baby. That's uh Oh, um, yeah, <laughs> I guess that could often. work out if they want to, you know, control the map. But oh, that's a hook from <laughs> Oh, uh, wait, is that the real Cersei? I think it is, yeah, he's finally losing, but here we go, Protect the Melody coming out right there, gonna be cancelled, Rue locking them down, there's the Protect the Melody action, that was just a disco in front of the first time, it saves Moon Queen initially, will it be the difference maker, here we go, Moon Queen's gonna be used, she's already used the Moon Finale though, Tantra's actually gonna survive in the background, Torture comes in with his Torment, even though the hook to save him, and it will save him in the end, no, he does go down to give it the fourth, but with Moon Queen dead, obviously a lot of damage is lost, Cersei, she's gonna end up falling right there, Wretched Act did survive, Holy crap. Did Cersei, who did Cersei take over? I have no idea. I, it was <laughs> complete madness. I hate Cersei, man. I hate Cersei so much. It's so confusing sometimes. She must have took over, she used her ultimate, so she definitely had somebody in that fight. Uh, yeah, there was just a lot of chaos as usual, but... Uh, Might have been for a split second or something. Um, Cersei can use the ultimate even if, if you have your BKB activated, right? Oh yeah, I believe, yeah, it's a superior magic, I believe, so... If I'm not mistaken, I believe that's the case. I, I, I'm not going to sit here and say I'm 100% honestly, but I, I think that is the case. Yeah, it should be the case. Otherwise, it wouldn't be too easy to play her in the late game. Yeah. Uh, and that's kind of where the hero shines, so mm -hmm. um, let's just assume it is like that. But the end result, though, again, Sync obviously coming out on top of that fight, definitely. In the end, so. And now you're going to have a sheep stick on Wretched Hag as she just bought the Acolyte Staff here. Right, yeah. It's not gonna be easy for the Legion team, that's for sure. I mean, maybe, maybe if they get Cersei to take over the Wretched Hag and then use that uh, sheep in some kind of way and Bat Blast, maybe, but mm -hmm. she's still level 12. I think that's, is that 75% damage output or something? Um, would be nice if she couldn't reach level 16 so she can get 100% damage output, but um, not gonna happen for quite some time. And Moon Queen's farm is not nearly enough to actually carry his own team or carry the entire team on his shoulders. Um, and the two puzzle box are just going to make it living hell for the <laughs> Legion team supports yeah. trying to ward up. I mean, look at it. There is running out constantly. I mean, there's one puzzle box here over at the north side of the map, and then there's one, another one over at the bottom, as well as the Shiver and mm -hmm. the Coral. That's got to be annoying. <laughs> yeah, especially when you have that defensive lineup that you already have with two supports and yeah. All those big ultimates. I, I just think they have to group up and try again. I mean, I, I don't think they can take it any further than this. Uh, the Legion team, they are, they are too far behind. I mean, it's 17,000 uh, experience and 15,000 gold. There's no way they're going to make it. Here, there, there's one thing, though, Zui. The Cersei. It's a Moon Queen. Yeah, it's a Moon Queen. Yeah, and, that's and, true. And Cersei. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> but but they mean, do have both Devour and the Tundra, though, for lockdown, even throw that BKB. Yeah, that's true. There's a and now they got a sheep. Quite a bit, and yeah, there's a sheep stick for good measure as well. 
Uh, yeah, the double puzzle box. It's almost a level three on Tundra. I assume it's been level three on Parasite. Yeah, it's level three there. Um, so yeah, he's gonna have his level three. It looks like uh, Rexer somewhat agrees though. They're gonna, they are gonna group up and go for another push down here. Now Geometer's Bane was purchased by Moon Queen. Portal Key actually just got by Keeper of the Force as well. So yeah, they're definitely kind of going all in right here at this they point. They're gonna DD. That's Did why. They? I think. Okay. Yeah, yeah you said that the, the Keeper just picked up his portal key, right? Yep. Uh, it was yep. probably like an impulse stun. Like, okay, we've got a DD, let's like make it, like bet everything or nothing. More Here's a, the Moon Queen spawns, the illusions, and you can just watch the tower just drop. Yeah, I think it's a good damage. Wretched Axe, like, get away, Illusion has the hook, and gets the Moon Queen! That's our target, wraps it in concept with the protective melody, trying to save the day, Root's gonna be coming out, Moon Queen is still alive, she can't get the Moon Finale off just yet, she's still being locked down, she's still locked down, she has not casted anything, and down goes Moon Queen, however, Wretched Axe was taken over by Cersei, he's doing a lot of work with that right here, he could be the difference maker in the end, the real Wretched Hag in the back one was regenerating, Cersei now coming out, she is gonna end up falling, not enough in the end, no buybacks used, that was just simply a genocide hold right there, from Sink Esports, Moon Queen literally did zero that fight. Yeah, there's nothing as annoying as that when you're playing hard carry. You're like constantly locked down. Just like trying to press that BKB, or maybe the BKB got off, but just trying to press that ultimate button, but nothing's gonna happen. Yeah. Well, well played by Sink Esports, but uh, well, Mickey once again starting off the team fight with a wonderful hook. And I mean, that's what keeps winning the, them these fights. Mm -hmm. I think it's been three fights this game or something that they have been able to uh, take a team fight win just by that hook. Yeah, I know we said earlier his his presence uh, earlier on in the game wasn't really the biggest, but <laughs> it's been huge in the end. Uh, if it wasn't for that, you know, that fight obviously could have hell. I mean, it really just shows you too. they were close. Rexos is actually a good. Considering Moon Queen did not cast a single ability, they actually almost won that fight, and that was because of Cersei taking yeah. over the Wretched Dragon. Just imagine if Moon Queen's able to at least do something. <laughs> <laughs> How different that Yeah, it could be. be a different story. They used a lot of uh, spells on that BKB Moon Queen as well. I yeah. noticed that Parasite, for example, used all his spells on the Moon Queen, so it kind of wasted a little bit. But, um, well, as long as they get the Moon Queen down, everything is fine, I guess. But, I, yeah. <laughs> I just think it's going to be so difficult now when they bought a pull key on Keeper of the Force as well. And uh, he's even further away from that Restless Stone. And the double damage that they had in the last fight. I mean, that was the purpose for why they bought that pull key on the Keeper in the first place. They didn't even get a chance to use it. Um, it seems cool. like there's... Yeah, okay, never mind. Just yes. some more count warding going more, on here. More illusions. More... Yeah, it's where... With the, with the Cersei and the Cam, all the freaking puzzle... Out, there's just... The mini-map is just filled with <laughs> so many dots running around. Not, uh, <laughs> not your usual game here, but... I mean, hell, these three Moon Queens just sitting in the middle lane as the illusions right there. But 1880 gold saved up. I mean, I, I gotta think Moon Queen's next item is that uh, is that symbol of rage here. I mean, that or uh, what do you think? That or Wingpo at this point? You think? Uh, I think he needs survivability. I mean, they are making sure to keep him down. I mean, Rep's ultimate is not enough to keep him up at this point. I mean, they got the Devourer locked down, which is is that seven seconds or something? I think it's like seven seconds. Six or something. seconds. It's wait. Um, Devour? It's three seconds. <laughs> oh, three seconds. Yeah. Uh, I'm, I'm looking at this freaking shot. I was like, uh, I didn't health. think it was that long. <laughs> Holy crap. <laughs> okay, that might have been overdoing it a little bit. And then I got a ton roll to me as well yeah. on top of that. So. That's four seconds. Uh, so seven seconds total between those two. There you go. So I could see the symbol of rage. Uh, that would be the normal choice. But I wouldn't mind seeing a Behemoth's Heart either. Just to, you know, survive yeah. the initial lockdown, more or less. Because symbol of rage, you still have to get your spells off, more or less. I mean, you still have to be able to move to actually regenerate that HP, but yeah, it's probably going to be a single fridge in the end. Even though I think the Behemoth's Heart could be good as well. Yeah, Behemoth's Heart. All right, well, I mean, 2900 gold saved up. Again, it, he'll probably be buying the Axe and the Malphi here. I mean, hmm, again, uh, if anything, I almost want to say, if you have a point, if you're going to be getting into a fight, sue the, uh, sell the Enterprise and get an Axe and the Malphi, just tank up as much as possible there, but... Now yeah, we'll I can agree on that. If that comes uh, up even. It's going to continue to farm. Very, very far up. Okay, they're going to head back now. There's yeah. going to be a token or a Congo up in the next, maybe. Oh, never mind. They already have a token. I'm completely out. Um, two minutes yeah. left. Uh, so they should. 
probably try to take some kind of fight. I mean, they got a DD up on here on high. They're not going to be able to make anything happen in time, but... Oh, there is the wing ball. Okay. Well, the dancing blade, at least. Yeah. <laughs> dancing. Oh, yeah, it's, it's going to be a wing ball, at least. I don't, I don't like that. I mean... I, I, yeah, no, I, I mean, we saw last fight. What what is? I mean, obviously, without the wing bow right now, what is a what is that much more agility can do for you? But when he gets the wing bow, sure, the evasion is good. But is the evasion going to be the difference maker against all these magic abilities and stuff that can't be evaded in the end? Yeah, so. there's like no hard carry. I mean, yeah. Or I mean, there's no melee heroes, for example, like a TDL or something like that. That's like keep pouncing on you. Uh, no berserker or. Yeah, all those heroes. No, no, there's no attack. berserker. There's no berserker. No berserker. No there's there's never a freaking berserker. There should be. Yeah, I agree. But there's no berserker. Uh, but yeah, no, I, I, I don't like that. It sounds like you're, you're in a greens there, but it's. It, we'll even see if he has it before a fight happens at this rate, because he still needs obviously both the snake bracelet and then the steam staff uh, before he has that finish. So. Yeah, I don't see the point at all. I mean, why wouldn't you want to go for a symbol of rage in that case instead? Yeah. Uh, just region up the elf because that's everything. That's like, I mean, Cersei is gonna take like, I don't know how much channel time is on, but it's a few seconds before he gets his stuff off. And during that time, Moonqueen has to survive. I mean, if he just gets that, like, regeneration, I think they're gonna be fine. I think mm -hmm. that Cersei is gonna be able to make it up for them, but. Yeah, I, if he's gonna drop. <laughs> that I, fast. I, I think I think they're almost going for the the illusion effect. I mean that, that that's the one thing that does make sense if you're just going for to take advantage of all the illusions that you have, you know, building up on those raw yeah. stats of agility is, is makes sense. But is that like what you want to do? Oh, the hook! But that was an illusion. So those hooks are so hilarious to watch. Yeah, the one with the portal key and everything. Those are those are fun. By the way, restoration stone on wretched hag. <laughs> so yeah, that that happened. He has token for 15 more seconds. They're going to be forced to fight right here. Bubbles going to be locked down. That was the real Bubbles. He goes down. He does have a buyback. Where the hell is the real Moon Queen? She's back here. Okay. Cersei got Wretched Hag, actually. This is big. Devour's taking a lot of damage. The real Wretched Hag's in trouble in the background. She's forced to blank away. The Moon Finale is up. Meanwhile, Torture is going to be left behind to be picked off. And Cersei Wretched Hag is chasing. But I think the real Wretched Hag is going to be fine. As, yeah, she, she gets away. So... There was a hold. I mean, they, uh... <laughs> yeah, big overcommitment from the Hellborn team. I don't think they were sure what, what they wanted to do. I mean, Richard Hag was, like, up, standing uphill, and he was like, okay, Tower, hit me. I want to lose my token so I can get back with 100% HP. And at the same time, like, Mickey goes crazy, just runs past him and says, like, hey, guys, focus me instead. Don't focus the Richard Hag. And, uh, yeah, they kind of end up getting caught. Five people in the Keeper of the Force Ultimate, and from then, that, it's just, yeah. Cersei got a Hag. Five man back last. <laughs> I, gonna do? You know, I didn't even notice if, if Cersei's hag if he double ulti because again he had a resto stone as well. So I, I don't, I'm almost thinking he oh. missed out on that opportunity. There we go, protect him out. He's gonna be right after the back blast. The real Moon Queen. She takes a sheep stick, but she gets tabbed it out uh, from her support. It's gonna be fine for now. And again, more illusions spawning, and you can just even see what the illusion damage. Look at the real wretched hag, Flensmeister jumping in right here. He yeah, wants he to chase. DDB. Oh yeah. <laughs> He does, yeah, there goes the sonar screen. But <laughs> look at Cersei, man! It's gonna be so freaking annoying. Oh, but they, they do keeper. catch Keeper. But okay. they need more, they need more, they need more. Nope. Oh, they just get one kill. TP out. Oh, that. Yeah. Alright, so I think that's worth it, actually, for the Legion team. I mean, they used uh, the Restoration Stone. I mean, they used two charges on the BKB, I guess, then. Mm -hmm. uh, that's... <laughs> I, I mean, Sync still has a hell of a lead. 17,000 gold lead, 26,000 experience lead. But it really feels like, I mean, Cersei is a big difference maker. Man, We're seeing a true power of Cersei this game. Yeah. And what she brings to the table. Especially yeah, with the right line. I think try to word up a little bit more. Maybe get some words up in the forest and just keep the Legion team in the base. Because I think they're strong enough to do that and they got a map control to do that. But in just these team fights, yeah, Cersei is such a big impact. Here we go. Keep it the forest still down for 20 more seconds. He does have a buyback if they find it necessary. But uh, it looks like he's just going to stay dead for now. The Illusion Moon Look at that damage. Those are just illusions right there for the most part. Doing some good damage to Wretched Hag. But uh, she is going to be fine. But yeah, Keeper's up in 8 seconds right now. Again, the illusions alone are just doing enough to really keep them off the base. And eventually save the melee rack. So th this, is, this is what I've heard so much about. This Cersei Moon Queen combination. And it really is something. I mean, th this is a Cersei Moon Queen that's down by 20,000 gold and 25,000 experience, and yet they're still holding off Sync Esports and even pushing back. It does, I, I think the, the stats could 
you you would fool me if I had to just blindly guess how even this game was. I would honestly probably say it was within like five thousand golden experience, <laughs> but that's just not the case, obviously. But again, just the power of what they bring. So that's that's what I was saying earlier. I, I think that that's where the wing bow pickup definitely comes into play. Yeah, I illusions. assume so. Um, well, as long as they keep him alive, as long as he doesn't get hooked by Devar, I guess they should be fine. Yeah, yeah, that's. <laughs> That's, that's been a big difference maker in these fights. A lot of gold being pulled up on either side. Oh, really. oh we go. Tundra. Yeah, he's in trouble right here. In comes the Song of the Sea. Not the most follow-up. Never mind. Here comes a big follow-up. Oh, oh, he saves the data. Mickey, is it going to be enough in the end? Tundra does live. Mickey's wow. landing some big wow. hooks, man. All right. They did use the kelp field, but uh, nothing else. Well, kelp field doesn't really matter too much at this point of the game or this stage of the game. Mm -hmm. Um, but the Congor should be up in like one to two minutes, maybe. I actually got a pause coming yeah, out Yeah, should be coming up soon. But like I said, the, the, a lot of gold being pulled up on either side. Look at Rhapsody, 2,900 gold. I uh, I want to say... Wow. <laughs> I is that, not notice that. It, I think it's going to be a shrunken head. But at the same time, you, you're looking at a Tundra and a Parasite that, and a Devourer, technically. Yeah. <laughs> I, I stop don't know. It, so. I mean, sure, he could go for that, but... Maybe it's yeah. It's 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 a tricky question. I just don't think it makes sense with that many stoppable ways with the shrunken head. So, but where do you go if not that? Well, there is the storm spirit. I mean, he has the portal key, so yeah, he can double save the moon queen uh, with the, both to protect the melody and the storm spirit. But uh, well, he got the ghost marchers and he's so squishy, so I don't think he's <laughs> gonna have time to use both. That's true. The, the aggressive different build here on him. Uh, but then there's 2,600 on Bubbles. You probably think that Sheep Stick is going to be next, but obviously it's still a ways of that. 4,100 more gold on Flens Monsters. By the way, 625 gold per minute. That really just has continued to rise here uh, in game number one. So uh, 4,300 now gold. Uh, what do you go here if you're Wretched Hag? Is this where you start getting damage, damage items? <laughs> or uh, I Maybe. rebuy a shrunken head, I guess? <laughs> uh, yeah, rebuying the shrunken head is a great one, but uh, I think I should get one more item before that. You can always upgrade the boots as well to uh, the post haste, mm -hmm. so you can keep this aggressive push up here at the top lane, because this is kind of what keeps the Legion team so passive uh, at this point, that friends my are just constantly pushing this top tower, so they can't really leave the base. And um, yeah, it's going to be fun to see what they do now. Oh, actually, he's going to jump uh, in. What? That's risky. That is really risky. Flensmeister going balls to the wall just for a bubble skill. Can they secure this kill? It's the question. You see right there, Cersei, can he land it? Yes, they can. Wretched I get a lot of trouble. Oh. He resto stone blinks. <laughs> That's where you know how desperate he was. Are they still going to be able to get this chase? Perhaps when he comes in, Staccato's blink is up. Can he get it off? No, yes, oh. he can. The last second, the sheepstick, the TP. Will it be successful? Oh. Yes, it will. Flensmeister gets away. He had a resto stone blink. That's all he did. Oh my gosh. That was quite hilarious. What was he even doing in the first place? I mean I mean he was just he just jumped straight into the base and went for the bubbles or something, but like he doesn't have the power to kill him alone. Yeah, that was risky. Well, it was fun at least. Yeah. And uh, now Hellborn team is gonna go for the Congo kill. I don't think the Legion team can stop them because they're all up here. No. Dag. No, he's dying way too quick. Yeah, that's going to be Bananas to remember, so we'll probably see, well, it's something like Bananas on, I don't even know, Bananas on Haga looks like, who's got the token then? Parasite, that's what? not an everyday pickup of token of life. Yeah, I would like them to swap it up, so that Wretched Hag has the token instead, I mean, that that's weird. He's the one that can be, yeah, he's yeah. the one who can be bursted down, I mean, why would you want to burst down a Parasite? I want to say, like, just bananas. give it to Torture or two over Parasite. Like, at least Torture, and granted, he's support Torture, but still. That's true. I mean, he's level 16. Said. I mean, he's yeah. dealing out a lot of damage. Mm. <laughs> Alright, well. Somebody had to take it in the end. <laughs> yeah, I guess. So, Parasite uh, has it. And he did, did go for those post as well. That's true, yeah. He's got the post taste. But I saw him buy a. Uh, there's a post taste on Tundra, speaking of that, so that's where this is starting to start kicking in. Uh, I saw Wretched Hag buy a plate mail, so he might be leaning towards a Frostfield plate here. Against, yeah, that uh, pretty good. I mean, armor is always good in late game when out attacks is what matters. Mm -hmm. 
I think Moon Queen, you know, we were debating it earlier what she's going to go for next. She went to Wingbow in the end. Now, now it has to be a symbol, or I think it has to be a symbol. Yeah. Well, you could yeah, go yeah, Behemoth Star still. I guess you could sell the now. Energizer, but probably a symbol at this point. Yeah, it should be. I mean, I don't want to sell any items, or I mean, she shouldn't sell any items at this point. It's better yeah. to just upgrade it with Spring Helm. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, you can see the Legion team, I mean, they're just grouping up constantly. I, they don't have any map vision, there's not much they can do. I mean, they're just protecting the Moon Queen. Um, kind of a game where you as a support just want to slap your own head and be like, Oh yep. my god, what's going on? Can we have some action? But, um, yeah, just kind of sit down there. I mean, keep yourself positioned always in the shadow behind the Moon Queen. I don't know, it's been a while since I feel like we've had a game like this, like a cast a game like this, where it's just... We're getting into the 50 minutes now, long, a little bit longer of a game, and yeah, it's still definitely going to be fun to see how this uh, turns out. But uh, just know that if you're playing the support and you, like they have two puzzle box and a bound eye, and you're like, you know, yeah, oh, that's got to be frustrating. Yeah. That's 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 very frustrating. Yeah. Uh, what else we got? Shrunken Head just purchased on the Devourer, actually. So he's got uh, that coming out right there. There you go. So he's got extra lockdown. Rift Shards, <laughs> what? <laughs> Pooper Rex, who cares about surviving, man? I just want deeps. It was a freaking like, Rift Shards. I don't shards. get it, though. I mean, it's, it's a Rift Shards level 1 as well. I mean, sure, he still keeps that buyback, which is good. But Rift Shards? Like, seriously, they, they do not have a token or anything like that. He did go for the Storm Spirit on Rhapsody, so I guess they get a little yeah. bit of survivability from that point. But, like, in general, I just don't... Yeah. What, if you're sync, you see that pickup and you're like, thank God, because it's just again even more more potential to quickly burst him down because of that. But at the same time, hey, if, if something slips up, like you said, with a, st a good storm spirit to protect a melody that they can't stop for whatever reason, all of a sudden Moon Queen starts auto attacking, crits can pop up, and uh, you know they they can start falling quickly. So it's Those a very risky can't pickup, crit, by the way, right? Uh, I, I mean, believe I the bounces themselves. I don't know if the bounce the, the like secondary hits can crit, but I if think it's based. It's one? based off the first yeah. one. Yeah. All right. Uh, oh, jeez! Look at that mauler. <laughs> when he can do anything. Yeah. Super of rage. That's the real Moon Queen. Uh, he's gonna die. Storm Spirit comes out. Here we go. They're falling in. Double Storm Spirit coming out right there. The Batflies misses. Cersei in the meantime actually taking over. No, she has Moon Finale going off. The lockdown Tundra comes in. Moon Queen is still locked down. Guess what? Moon Queen's dead. She does have a buyback. She uses it right there. Meanwhile, Wretched Echo Sheepstick by her counterpart right there. The double Sheepstick from the Cersei Hag. And the real Wretched Egg's in trouble. The real Wretched Egg is going to fall down in the end. She has buyback. She does buyback. She has post haste remember. Will she come in? It looks like maybe. Cersei, in the meantime, back to his original form. He's in some trouble. And Travis comes out. Here goes Moon Queen, though. The real Moon Queen. The auto attacks doing some good damage as expected. Wretched Hag is nearby, though, but she doesn't have a Resto Stone. She has a Sheep Stick. They're going to go back in. Here we go. Wow. Right on top of the Moon Queen. And Moon Queen goes down. Bubbles will fall. And that could do it. Moon Queen does not have a buyback. Champion of New Earth is left. The token of life on him. Hey, it worked out. I will say that much. <laughs> and yeah, they're not going to go for the base. Yeah, I think that's going to do it, actually. I mean, it was an interesting fight for sure. Richard's not really paying off. Um, I, I, don't, I don't even know if a crit happened there. <laughs> no, I doubt it. Wouldn't have mattered at least. Yeah. Uh, just needed to stay up and fight and on those AoE damage attacks. But it happened. Well, I think, uh, yeah, Sync has done it. <laughs> the early GG coming out from Slap even. A little bit of BM there, but no, it, it wasn't. It was a good game overall, obviously, as uh, as far as uh, as far as far it played out. And, and the fact that a Moon Queen Cersei combination was still able to hit hang in the game, being down 20,000 plus gold in experience, it, it tells you something, man. But, uh, yeah, I... <laughs> You got. You gotta wonder if he went for at least an ox in the Malphi there instead of those rift shards. If maybe a little bit different, but in the end, you know, you make your decisions, and obviously, uh, hey, it could have ended up the same way, even even if he did do that. So, but uh, what a game! I mean, it was definitely a fun one to watch there, Snowy. Uh, final thoughts? Yeah, it was uh, very different from what you usually see. Um, I like the drafts coming out from Rexels. I mean, Insane is kind of drafting a little bit different. He's kind of laying back a little bit more to like old school than yeah. the other teams are. Um, like playing these like keeper suicide that we saw during season one, like in every single game. Like, so kind of got that spirit. But yeah. uh, 
No, I, I wouldn't want to ask, though, if my microphone is okay now. Oh, no, it's, it's great, yeah. It's, it's great. Right. So we don't have to struggle with that anymore because I would hate that.